on the rooftop that has all dike and equipment. <laughs> Cringe. Kind of noticed something new that's happening. It's like a bunch of these units. It's like this top, you know, where all the wires are. It's all sagging down. Is that how hot this panel is getting? Fan only, but isn't doing much. But I think the heat is so intense in the afternoons. You can see how hot it's been getting. Those are just sagging like crazy. Yeah, like what the F? Look at this. This side faces the morning sun and then the afternoon. But look at this. The, uh, this is all, this is falling off. I mean, it's insulated panels, I think. I know uh, Aeon has uh, foam in between their panels. And I know Aeon blows air through this chamber. Maybe this one doesn't have that. <laughs> Maybe it just has nuclear temp temps in here. You know, those are rotaries, right? So this whole shell is as hot as could be when those things are running. You'd think that there'd be air passing through this chamber. Control temp, there we go, 72 degrees. So it's in that, in the cooling set points at 74. So I'll have to see if I could change my cooling set point down a little bit because other than that, this unit's not gonna run. Oh, there it goes. Now it says 36%, so it's got the fans on too. So, I don't know. Might just have to wait for it to actually start before you can maybe change the speed. Oh, now it's ramping up. Now it's all over the place in power. I can feel like vibrations in here. Maybe there's actually something mechanically wrong with this one. That heat. Cool suction. See, dome is kind of cool on these. And then it gets very hot, you know, because this is all gas from here down, you know, the rotary pressurizing the vessel. But it's making some interesting sounds. Hopefully it does it again. That compressor made some horrendous sounds a second ago. I don't have it manual control anymore. I just set the uh, cooling control temperature below what the space temperature is, and it's all in automatic mode. Listen to that. The amps are bouncing all around too on this system. You can hear it. Something's going on in there for sure. <laughs> that might be a laugh for joy because, you know, it's actually acting up now. Gotta stop the video so I can check my pressures again. I'm using my phone for the testo. Of course, when I uh, stopped the video to check my pressures and speed capture that, that compressor like lugged with <laughs> a pretty slow RPM. All right, so uh, we started it after clearing the alarm. Here's the pressures I put here. So if we want to look at it, already logged it. It's weird that it's not changing now. Either that or something happened when this uh, phone got dropped. This phone fell a second ago. So I set it there. There's no way they're just deadlocked. Oh, look, the fucking piece of shit. See, hitting it again on the ground will make it clear. This phone's done this a few times. Look at this. It's locked up. I want you to get the uh, power going in. Here's one of those reactor things. There's only two amps going through that. The way off. Ooh. This is that thing. Oh, man, the phone finally started. Let's see if I get some pressures here. Just got a message on my phone I'm recording with that multi window closed because of the. Ooh. Dang. Goodness, piss. Did you hear that thing? There's definitely something wrong with that. I haven't even beg on that yet. Ooh. But I don't think I need to listen to it. 
Uh, pressure is 271 discharge over 128 suction. There's not a high pressure issue going on at all. Sounds like shite though. I think it's just uh, intermittently like getting tight and then the high current spikes are being detected by the inverter board. I don't see any. Where are the current sensors on this bad boy? Sometimes you can see it might be on the back side of the board. There, uh, There's the, uh, oh my gloves on, so I gotta be careful. So there's the IGBT. Uh, the pressures are down enough that the fans are barely moving. 269 over 80. Well, it's, the suction's dropping. It'll slow down if the suction drops too much. So the IGBT is down under there. There's a power in and out and all the control in and out. Usually has all those optical isolators and driving circuitry and everything. So power's going out and out to the compressor. So there's that. Well, the power in right here. Right? Which makes sense. One, two legs are going to go through the two-pole relay. We talked about this yesterday. You can see this big fat resistor. <laughs> Look at the size of them. And then that's probably the charging circuit when you first turn the power on, and these capacitors are not charged. I got to be careful touching stuff like that because sometimes capacitors have a potential. Um, anyway, when you first turn it on, capacitors are discharged. You just apply your power through the rectifier into those capacitors. It'll be a Massive quick current sink, current surge. So, uh, just they slowly charge them up through the resistors, and then once it gets up to a certain threshold, then the controller will close that relay, and then uh, then it's charging continuously through the uh, utility power. Now we're back to normal pressures again. Two ninety-seven over one twenty. Amps. It actually sounds kind of normal right now. So voltage. I don't know if we detect it with AC voltage, but let's go to the top of the capacitor. Yeah, so we got like, see how it's like 767 volts. So a lot of capacitors like this, the end plate is a potential. So go to DC power to ground just to see what you get shocked with. There you go. 320 volts negative. 320 volts to ground right there. That might shock the ever living piss out of you. Yep. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can get shocked. If you ground yourself and touch the backs of those capacitors, so keep that in mind. You learn from doing it once, twice, three times, <laughs> like I have. So poking your fingers around. I just brought very minimal tools up in my gloves or my buckets, so I'm barehanded. I'm actually been getting used to wearing gloves. So I'm just looking at this circuit board. You know, I like looking at them, figure out how they work. So from what I can see is the AC power comes in right here, three phase. One probably goes right through the diodes, and then it's, which seems to be right here, I can tell, it looks like. And then two through here, and then they're going back into here. It looks like they're using a rectifier right there, three phase in rectifier. So I guarantee you, with that in AC volts, we're going to get the approximate 480 volts going in. Yeah, 484. And if I flip this to DC there, right? It's gonna be like 300 and almost 330 volts or, or no, way, way above what this meter can do, maybe. Yeah, see, I was reading like half, you know, or whatever going on. This meter is not a 600 volt meter. Look how slow the cadets crane motors are going. Well, this one's not really hardly turning. This one over here. It's just because it's such a low capacity. I imagine these gotta be the outdoor fan motor ones. Three out, 
So you got, yeah, it's tagging on some power going over there. Looks like there's something. Let's see. Is it, oh, jumper to each other. Yep. P1 and N1, so it must be power. It might be taken right off. The, it looks like they're using the rectifier on this to send high voltage, so I guarantee that's like 600 plus volts going over there. And there's an IGBT or a small one probably behind this. That's too. Yeah, a little white one. I can see it. And that's give it three phase power to the other fan motors, which I think is big looking. Yeah, it's big white motors down there. I can't really see it. But yeah, that is the variable frequency drive section or the inverter section for the Daikin units. I mean, it's got the technology. Um, Aeon mostly uses just a, a unloader bypass valve just to control their supply air. So technically, inverter drive is more precise and better. It's not the on-off, load-unload noise that Aeon does, but so far the Aeons are more reliable. And these have a lot of quirks. Um, this controller here, which you also see in other units, train as one. So, I mean, they're, they're a lot better to navigate through than the, the Aeon type, you know, which is pretty basic. But the Aeon, so far, is a more reliable unit, it seems. So she's working now. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sucker off, let it sit off for a few minutes, and then do, restart it, let it run again, see if I can catch it again. Okay, it's been a good 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna put this unit from fan only back to cool. I'm gonna put it to cool only, I guess. Put it to cool and heat, in case I forget to change that back. Go back to quick menu, we're going back into cooling. So, kind of kicked on a little quicker than I thought it would. I thought it'd have a minute. So let's go to DC volts. There we go. 659 volts, like I said earlier, it's about 660. Because, you know, 230 volts gives you the 330, and roughly double that gives you about 660. Now that's running Saga down about 650. Oh, that compressor sounds off the choice. There's my amp going into the inverter drive. Now that is amp for the compressor and for those fans, since it looks like the DC is jumpering over to each one of these. I'm pretty dang sure that's what this is. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Enough power side gear. I'm at 650 now. The compressor's wrapped up. That's totally normal. The capacitors are at. Sounds like it's ramped up pretty good. Cooling capacity 63%. Space is at 72.3. I have it set for 68. So, it's right. Discharge error is way up at 73 still. Got the supply or uh, the suction pressure way down there, it'll come up. It's got both uh, electronic expansion valves as well as you know, controlling the compressor speed. So, the expansion valve's got to open more, it depends on you know what the superheat would be, which I don't have that hooked up. It's got the outside fan, exhausting, so everything's running. The discharge air is now down to 66. The suction pressure is now 102. It's starting to sound kind of normal again. Oh, it just got pissed and stopped abruptly. I know it didn't hit its hard target discharge air. Nope, 63. Discharge air cooling set point 55. So, yeah. So, I don't think it alarmed quite yet. Let's see if it uh, restarts. And look, it turns off, opens up, look at that, the capacitors are discharging. So when it shut down, it actually opened up that relay. Okay, didn't get the video started fast enough, but it was slowly charging up there. Oh, I just heard the relay click. So it did close some sort of small relay probably to send the uh, current limited voltage over to the uh, capacitors to get them charged up. There's the lamp, there we go. No inrush current or anything like that to start that compressor. This bolt is still about 660. Pretty good amount of vibrations right there on that compressor. Again, it is sounding rather choice. 
this <laughs> speeds up there. 650 volts DC bus. Seven amps just jump up and down all over the place. There goes nine amps. Two ninety-eight over one thirteen. Bridging pressures. Nothing to worry about there. So it's actually pumping the refrigerant and all, but it's uh, something, some of shit in there. So uh, if I was the one to pull that out and I didn't have to go back to warranty, I'd be curious to cut that open. A little extra abrasive sound in there, but it's, I've heard these things really sing. Whoop, and there it stopped again. So the cooling capacity was at 63%. Looks like that's going to probably change to zero in a second. What was my discharge? I know he didn't hit that. 60, it was getting there. Okay, I heard a click. There goes the slow charge on the capacitors. Finally caught it. Oh, it went all the way before it brought on the mains the big relay so small relay limited current through the resistors these look obviously these big freaking wire round resistor right there unloaded got 667 volts now okay. gotta drop down once the compressor goes that's your peak to peak voltage off your rectified ac uh oh man <laughs> Over 300 discharge and uh, suction dropping. Ooh, hear that? Dang. Gonna blow! I can't give it anymore! Oh, that was horrible. It's like, this been burning. It's like, Captain! I can't give her anymore! The whole thing's gonna come apart! That sucks so bad. Anyway, yeah, we could just say that compressor's done. <laughs> Proved my point. Got to play around with the inverter a little more. So, um, let's add a scope or really could take that circuit board out. I'd be curious if this is just in series with the uh, rectified in here, which I think it is. Or if, like I said, like I know, like in the Fredericks and stuff, you know, they actually use these coils to uh, do the, the buck boost. So 660 volts DC, and it kind of varied about quite a bit. Uh, swing of total like 20 volts, uh, 660-ish or whatever when uh, nothing was running and it was dropping down to like 650 or so, even a little less. I'd say it's probably not a regulated one with the buck boost or whatever. It's obviously just the one coil. It's just a filter. Same thing as when you uh, pull the jumper on your variable frequency drive and you put the reactor choke or whatever they want to call it depending on what you're reading that's all that is i believe so yep and it's probably what it means lr line reactor one uh, i don't know if there's a schematic new anyway enough playing around with this it's getting to be about 11 o'clock midday for me so spend enough time on this now we got to find out about parts but it won't be me that'll be here to put it in so eh, missed opportunity but I'll get to play with some pretty cool stuff, just not in the Daikins.